Hello, this is an LTC 3780 uh, printed circuit board and I've recently found these on AliExpress for $4. Yeah, $4 for this entire board. Now if you look for just the chip itself, you can pay anywhere between two, three dollars for that. So yeah, that's very cheap. On this board we have input connector, output connector and three potentiometers. Now they are actually marked on the back but now of course they're the wrong way around. Um, so on the left is the under voltage set, in the middle constant current set and on the right hand side when I flip this back over V out set or the voltage limit. This is the current limit. And this is the voltage uh, below which the unit will shut down and won't actually transfer power from input to output. Now sometimes this is called under voltage lockout or in this case under voltage set and sometimes they call it MPPT although of course it's not proper maximum power point tracking. So the way this works for under voltage uh, lockout is let's say you have a battery on the input and you don't want that battery to drop below 12 volts so it's a lead acid battery where well, you can set this pot for 12 volts and then when the input voltage gets down to 12 volts the system will shut down and will stop transferring power from input to output thus protecting your power supply. Now in terms of MPPT the way it works is um, that it does the same job. Let's say you've got a solar panel as your input to this device. Um, you want the solar panel's voltage to be able to rise up to at least, well let's say 18 volts because that's generally the maximum power point for a 36 cell panel. You want it to rise up to 18 volts but not to be pulled any lower than that. So what this potentiometer does then is it lets the solar panel rise up to 18 volts and then starts to transfer power from input to output. Of course the instant that that power draw causes the solar panel voltage to drop below 18 volts it shuts down. Solar panel immediately rises up to 18 volts. Well not immediately because you've got these input capacitors and then the system switches back on. So it kind of holds the solar panel at its maximum power point. Hence they call this the MPPT pot. Um, but what I wanted to do today was just look at the voltage at which this system powers up and the voltage at which it powers down with this pot set to minimum. Now I could set this pot to 18 volts I, for the solar panel. I could set it to 12 volts for a lead acid battery. What I want to do is set it to the absolute minimum which it is set at and see um, at what voltage this circuit powers up and starts transferring uh, energy from input to output and then at what voltage um, this has to drop down to for the system to shut down and for it to stop transferring power from left to right. So let's uh, check it out. So I'm going to use my old friend uh, the double supercapacitor 2.7 volts per capacitor so this can go up to 5.4 volts. Um, I'm hoping that this device um, starts up uh, below 5.4 volts otherwise this is never going to actually get this to turn on so that's the hope. Um, I've made up some connectors here which I can put on the super cap um, and we've got little blades here which will go into the input connector on this so let's do that now. Oh, and I've also got flashing red LED. This is one of the ones that you don't need a resistor. There's no resistor in here. So I'm just going to pop that on there. Uh, put this on here with a red cap and bring that in. And then I'm going to poke those into the input connections on here. Just put the black one on as well, making sure not to short these out because I don't want a very large rush of current out of this uh, super cap. Right let's poke those into the input of the LTC 3780 and see what we can see. And we can see precisely nothing. Um, there are two LEDs on this board. 
There's one here that says fault. Now this lights up red if the input voltage is below the threshold set by this under voltage lockout. So that tells you that the uh, input voltage is too low and that the system has shut down. And then there's a green LED here, which is just marked OK. And that just tells you that a voltage is being generated at the output. Um, so neither are lit up. I think the voltage on this super cap is too low. So I'm going to bring in a charger for the super cap. Right, here's my charger. This is another buck boost converter. I've got 12 volts coming in. Um, I've set this to oh, 5.4 volts uh, voltage limit because I don't want to take the super caps above 5.4. They probably wouldn't go above 5.4 because of the protection circuits on this thing. Okay, let's put a couple of um, 4 millimeter to 2 millimeter converters in connect the banana plugs and now if I switch this thing on uh, oh yeah there's only 2.4 volts on the super cap so let's uh, leave that charging for a while the current's a bit low actually isn't it let's um, press and hold that and then take the current up to let's say half an amp and get it charging at that Okay, the voltage is going up and I'll come back when there's something to see. Um, well, we're up to three volts now on the uh, power supply, the charger for these super caps. Um, there is the faintest dim red glow. I'm not sure if you'll see it, if the camera will pick it up on this LED. Yeah, possibly you can just see that. Um, but I'll carry on up uh, until this fault LED is nice and bright. Right now up to four volts on the power supply. Um, I think you can see that this LED is now bright enough to see. So it's still saying fault. The input voltage is too low to actually power up this circuit. Incidentally if you don't like the dull lighting conditions well that's just the weather. It's pretty terrible. So what I want to do is carry on uh, charging this until this circuit powers up. Now when it powers up, the fault light should go off and the OK green LED should come on because then the circuit will actually be transferring power from input to output. Um, and I'm hoping, <laughs> well I know because I've been doing this last couple of days, um, that it's going to be at a, at a voltage that's well below the maximum 5.4 volts of the supercapacitors. So I shall come back when that is about to happen. Right, 4.3 volts on the power supply. Now, um, I've seen this flip over into operational mode at about 4.4 volts. So that's what I'm expecting to happen. So we'll just watch it go uh, up and approach 4.4 volts. Now 4.4 volts um, is good because it's well below the uh, maximum voltage of the super cap. In fact, you know, I need to take the super cap no higher than about 5 volts. Uh, there it is at 4.4. It hasn't actually turned on yet because as I say, the fault, red fault light will go off and the green OK light will come on. 4.44. Uh, that's a bit higher than I remember it. I've changed these wires to thinner ones. So, oh, there it, there it goes. So the fault light's gone off. The green LED here has come on. Now I've set the output voltage to five volts or thereabouts because my platen, I'm just going to turn this off actually because um, what I want to do now is see what voltage this drops back out at because there will be a little bit of hysteresis. So I think it was 4.44, wasn't it, when it came on? Let's see what voltage it drops out at. My plan for this, I have bought a few more of these boards because at $4 each, well, they're a steal. I mean, you couldn't buy all these components for $4, could you? I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. There is VAT on top of that, but there's no postage because AliExpress do all these deals uh, where if you buy a certain quantity, I bought three more of these, um, you get free postage. So the idea here is to charge this super cap up to 5 volts. This thing will turn on, set a suitable current and the output at 5 volts, and then charge another supercapacitor. 
And then when that one gets up to 4.44 volts with another board, the voltage might be slightly different, of course, because there'll be uh, slight differences in these boards. So it's just about to drop down to 4.44. Um, have another one of these LTC 3780s and charge another supercapacitor and have a sort of daisy chain of charging where you charge this one first, then this switches on, charges the next one. Um, then that gets up to a suitable voltage, switches on the next buck boost converter and charges the next one and it'll be a sort of daisy chain. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's for no other reason than I thought it would be a bit of a laugh. That's really the only reason. Um, okay, this is discharging fairly slowly because it's just discharging because of the power that this chip is drawing. Not entirely sure when that's going to cut out. Um, so I'm just going to have to basically sit here with the camera running. I'll take this bit out in the edit and we'll cut to the to where this actually shuts down again. Uh, there it goes. The red LED fault light has come on at 4.34 volts. The green one is still on, but it's fading out and it's only uh, staying on briefly because of these output capacitors. So it turned on at 4.44 volts. It's turned off at 4.34 volts, so 100 millivolts of hysteresis. That's quite good. That means that this um, LTC 3780 um, actually fires up at quite a low voltage, under 5 volts, which is, yeah, quite good, really. Well, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Um, like I say, I've got three more of these on order, and I'll present another video with this device in it when I've got all the daisy chain of super caps, each one charging the next one as it rises up towards 5 volts. Not sure why I'm doing it, really, just for a bit of a laugh. But anyway, that's it for now. Cheerio.